What's up everyone? My name is Jason Turley and today we are back with more over the wire war game challenges. We're looking at Leviathan today. In the last episode we solved levels 0 and 1 and we got the password for Leviathan 2. So let's log in and see what's going on. Copy the password. I got my SSH command loaded up, ready to go. Paste it in, pound enter, clear my screen, ls type al, see what's in my directory. We get the normal bash logout, bash rc, and dot profile files. These all have to do with the bash configuration. It's likely not really necessary for this challenge. But we see print file. It's highlighted, so it stands out. It's very interesting. You can see it's owned by Leviathan 3, and their permissions are read and set user ID, and then our permissions are read and execute since we're the Leviathan 2 user. So when we run this file, we will have the permissions of Leviathan 3. So what happens when I just run it like this with no arguments? I get file printer, usage, print file, and then file name. Okay, what if I do that? and just give it dot profile since it's right there. It's something I have access to. Okay, so it looks like this command just prints out a file, exactly what it says. So can I just say print file and then Etsy Leviathan pass Leviathan three, get the password. You can't have this file. Well, I asked nicely. All right, let's um, run ltrace, if I can spell ltrace, bang bang, to rerun that last command. Okay, we get libc, there's a call to access, and then the file name we gave it, and then four. And then it prints out, you can't have this file. So what is access? Let's look up man access Linux, access the manual page, Int access, it takes a path name, so the location of the file, and it takes a mode. What does mode mean? Scrolling down. Access checks whether the calling process can access the file path name. If path name is a symbolic link, it is dereferenced, meaning it just follows that link. A symbolic link is a file that just points to a different file. The mode specifies the access. <laughs> The mode specifies that accessibility checks to be performed. It's either FOK or a mask consisting of the bitwise OR. So read OK, write OK, or XOR OK. FOK tests for the existence of the file. All right, so it just checks to make sure that we have access, proper, proper permissions to read the file. And I don't. Okay, so let's create a dummy file. Echo, please sub. And let's throw it at into temp file name. Now print file. Temp file name. Just to make sure it works. Okay. So let's look at this program a little bit more closely with GDB, the GNU debugger. Print file. File name. Set assembly flavor Intel because I like Intel syntax I think it's prettier disassemble main okay don't really care about this setting up the stack we see a call to printf what is this value so it's pushing some value on the stack and then it calls printf I can say x slash x examine a string this address so usage file name okay so compare it prints this so that's the usage that we saw earlier we see the call to access it adds 16 to the stack the tests okay if we get here puts it's very similar to printf it just prints the message to the screen examine s that address you can't have this file okay so if we end up in this code block you know this branch statement we lost we we, we saw that earlier 
So let's disassemble, let's disassemble main again. Hit enter to get the rest. Okay, we see get EUID, set real and effective user ID. So this makes it a set user ID binary. Not really interesting. We see a call to system. What is system? The system library function uses fork to create a child process that executes the shell command specified in the command. Okay. All right. So system just executes a command, right? So going back to our terminal, what command is it executing here? Let me set a breakpoint on this call to system. Copy that address, B for breakpoint, run, and then my argument, temp file name. All right, now we're at this breakpoint, right? I can hit disss again, hit enter, and you see this little arrow. So this is where we're at. So this was pushed on the stack, EAX. What is in EAX? load effective address so it loads whatever was in um, minus ox2804 from the base pointer into eax so i can hit r for oh no uh, how, do, how do i look at registers in this i've been using win debug so much let me just uh, examine string eax all right so this is what is about to get past the system bin cat temp file name cool so Jason this is not interesting who cares how can I get privilege escalation with this so let me open up a new document so what's happening is system is being used to call this bin cat temp file name All right so it's really just running the cat command on a file that we give it when we try to give it Etsy Leviathan 3, it gives us an error. So what can we do? Well, in Bash, you can end one command and start a new one with a semicolon. So what if we pass in temp file name to cat, we end that command with a semicolon, and then we run bin sh, and we get a shell. So what we need to do is create a file. So touch, like temp file name or something semicolon to end it and then bin sh like we want that to be our file so when that gets passed into system it'll cat this out and then it'll run our shell so let's give that a try copy this go back to our shell or terminal exit out of gdb yes i want to quit paste that in doesn't like that syntax. What if I just say sh? Do you like that? Okay. Now, when I run print file, I can give it this file, including the quotation marks. Bin cat temp file two notes as file or directory, so we get an error there, but we don't care. We see the dollar sign, meaning we have a shell. I can say, who am I? I'm Leviathan three. I have all their permissions, and now I can cat Etsy Leviathan pass Leviathan 3. Boom. All right, moving on. We got their password. We can exit out. Now we can SSH is Leviathan 3. Copy their password. Paste it in. All right, now we're in. LS tech AL. Level 3. All right, this seems very similar to the last one. Let's um, just run it. Enter the password, ABC, one, two, three. Zap, wrong. Okay, let's level three, let's do an L trace on that. See what it's calling, string compare, Hono33, kana. Interesting, so it's calling string compare and then it tells us to enter the password. Normally, it'd be the opposite way around. It asks you to enter the password, then it calls string compare with what you entered, and then it checks that. But so, what, what if I just type in this?
I get another string compare with SNL printf. Okay. Let me pass in that. You've got shell. This is the shell. Damn, okay. That was easy. Let me exit out. Please. Oops. Let's try this outside of L trace. Paste in that. You've got the shell. Who am I? Leviathan 4. OD is not a thing. ID. Cat. Etsy. Leviathan. Leviathan 4. Okay. So that was simple, right? All we had to do was spy on it with Ltrace, and we saw that it was calling string compare on um, SNL printf. I'm not really sure what this string compare in the beginning is for. It looks like just misdirection, just something to throw us off our game. But we're hackers, you know, we can't be thrown off. All right, guys, let's end it there. Thanks for watching, and as always, take it easy, and see you in the next video.